Hello agents and welcome back to another Tom Clancy's The Division 2 video. In today's video, I'm excited to share with you guys three top tier solo PvP builds for Division 2. These builds are extremely powerful and will give you the confidence you need when fighting other players in the dark zone. So if that excites you, smash the like button and without wasting any more time, let's get into it. Okay guys, starting off with one of my personal favorites, the classic meta build. This build performs great in up-close PvP fights, mainly because of how much damage you can deal out while still having a ton of survivability. This is ideal for a solo player, giving you the advantage you need in the dark zone. Having the exotic catharsis mask equipped provides an additional amount of damage while aiding in survivability at the same time. This is thanks to its native talent, Vicious Cycle, which provides 1% weapon damage for every time you are hit, maxing at 30 stacks. Reaching max stacks will trigger a purge, healing you based on the amount of total armor you have while removing any status effect that was previously applied to you. So this exotic mask basically serves as a mini healer, which is great for the increased survivability. Having the Fenris Vest, Picaro's Holster, and Matador Walker Harris named Backpack all contribute to the high damage that this build deals out. So let's have a closer look. For this build, I'm using the Firewall Specialization for the Extracellular Matrix Mesh, which upon using an armor kit gives 200% armor and 200% health over 10 seconds, increasing your overall survivability. For the primary weapon, I'm using the Shield Splinterer, which is currently at 22 expertise with 15% AR damage, 15.5% health damage, and 10% damage to target out of cover. This weapon's talent is perfect optimist. Weapon damage is increased by 4% for every 10% ammo missing from the magazine. And for the secondary, you may use whatever you like, but I'm currently using the exotic SMG, the Ouroboros. Maxed out at 25 expertise, which gives a nice 25% weapon damage bonus, 13.6% SMG damage, 19% critical hit chance, and 9% damage to target out of cover. This weapon comes with the talent, rule them all. When you have a status effect applied to you, 50% of the ammo in your magazine will apply the same status effect to your target. However, this effect may only occur while in combat, a great way to counter your opponent in PvP. For the sidearm, I'm using the Orbit, which comes with the native talent Perfect Finisher. Swapping from this weapon within 10 seconds of killing an enemy grants 35% critical hit chance and 40% critical hit damage for 15 seconds. The Catharsis Mask not only contributes to the massive damage that this build can do, but it also increases the survivability greatly. With 20% incoming repairs, roughly 5,000 armor region, and a maxed out 12% crit hit damage mod, the Talent Vicious Cycle grants 1% weapon damage per stack. Taking damage builds this stack and the cap is 30. Taking damage at max stacks triggers a purge, removing all stacks and status effects while dropping a healing cloud which restores 5% of max armor for 10 seconds to all allies in the cloud. Next up, I'm currently rocking the Fenris chest piece with 12% crit hit damage, 6% crit hit chance, and a 12% crit hit damage mod. The unbreakable talent gives this build an increased survivability. When your armor is depleted, repair 95% of your armor. However, this number is reduced to 50% in PvP. For the holster, we'll be using the Picaro's holster, which comes with 15% weapon damage and 12% crit hit damage with a max armor core attribute. For the backpack, I'm using the Matador backpack. This named high-end bag has 6% critical hit chance, 12% critical hit damage, and a 12% crit hit damage mod. With the talent Perfect Adrenaline Rush, whenever you are within 10 meters of an enemy, gain 23% bonus armor for 5 seconds. This stacks up to 3 times, giving you an incredible increase in survivability. Cheska gloves with max armor, 6% crit hit chance, and 12% crit hit damage. Grupo Sombra knee pads with max armor, crit hit chance, and crit hit damage. For the skills, the Defender Drone and Decoy work really well in PvP fights, but I'm currently running the EMP Sticky Bomb to stagger the enemy. For the stats, my primary AR is at 54% crit hit chance and 156 crit hit damage. This next build is super powerful, but sacrifices survivability as a result. We will be utilizing the Ridgeway's Pride Exotic Vest in combo with the Wicked Talent on the Sheska Backpack. 
What makes this build extremely effective is the high burst damage it deals out. Stacking weapon damage from the Picaro's holster, Walker Harris, and Fenris gloves for an extra 10% AR damage. Although this build lacks in survivability, having the Bleed Hive equipped as a skill can help increase the survivability since the talent on the Ridgeway's Pride Exotic chest piece allows you to regenerate armor over time to a certain degree when an enemy is bleeding. I'm using the Black Market AKM with the Sadist talent. Sadist increases weapon damage to bleeding enemies. In combo with the Wicked talent, which increases weapon damage to enemies with status effect applied to them, this build will deal an insane amount of damage as you can see from the clips on screen. You may even get called a cheater using this build, so just beware. But anyway, let's take a closer look. For the specialization, I'm going with Firewall. Firewall is amazing in PvP and will only increase the survivability of this build, which is much needed. For the primary weapon, I'm rocking the Black Market AKM, which has 13% weapon damage, 15% AR damage, 19% health damage, and 10% damage to targets out of cover. The weapon talent Sadist is a huge contribution to the amount of damage dealt with this build. Sadist amplifies weapon damage by 20% to bleeding enemies. For the secondary weapon, I'm using the Tactical Vector SBR, 4% weapon damage, 15% SMG damage, 20.5% critical hit chance, and 10% damage to targets out of cover. Walker Harris Mask Rolled to Armor, which comes with 5% weapon damage, max crit hit chance, crit hit damage, and a 6% crit hit damage mod. Walker Harris Knee Pads with a max armor roll and 5% damage to armor for two pieces, 6% crit hit chance, 12% crit hit damage. The Ridgeway's Pride Exotic Vest with max weapon damage, 6% crit hit chance, 11.4% crit hit damage, and a 12% crit hit damage mod. With the talent Bleeding Edge, shooting enemies within 15 meters applies bleed to the target. Repair 3 to 48% of your armor per second for every enemy that is bleeding within 15 meters. So next we have the Picaro's Holster that comes with 15% weapon damage, and I currently have this rolled to max armor with 12% crit hit damage. A Cheska backpack with 8.5% crit hit damage, and since I couldn't find a better bag, I have 4% weapon handling. Ideally, you would want crit hit chance instead of this. The talent Wicked, applying a status effect to an enemy, increases weapon damage by 18% for 20 seconds. For the skills, we have the Bleed Hive and Decoy. Last but not least is arguably the strongest DPS build in the Division 2, the Striker Battle Gear set. This build is extremely powerful, and once you max your stacks, the amount of damage that you can deal out is incredible. This build works wonders with the Ouroboros Exotic Submachine Gun. Considering how much RPM is on this gun and the additional rate of fire that you unlock from having at least three pieces of Striker equipped makes this build a force to reckon with. Just look at how fast the players in this clip are melting. Utilizing the four-piece Striker bonus grants the Striker gear set talent, Striker's Gamble, in combo with the Striker Backpack, increasing total weapon damage gained per stack by 1%. And having one piece Sokolov grants you that extra 10% SMG damage, allowing you to deal out even more damage. So let's have a closer look. For the specialization, I'm using Firewall, and for the primary weapon, we'll be rocking the Ouroboros. For the secondary weapon, I'm using the Shield Splinterer, but you may use whatever you like. The main character of this build is the Ouroboros so you won't really need to use anything else. So we have the Striker face mask with maxed armor rolled, 11.1% critical hit damage and 6% critical hit chance. The Striker pack rolled to armor with 9.9% crit hit damage and a 12% crit hit damage mod. This Striker pack comes with the talent risk management. Increased total weapon damage gained per stack of Striker's gamble from 0.65% to 1%. Having two pieces grants weapon handling, three pieces grants rate of fire, and a fourth piece unlocks the striker's gamble talent. Weapon hits increase total weapon damage by 0.65%, stacking up to 100 times. The striker gloves are rolled to armor with 11.3% crit hit damage, and the knee pad has max rolled armor with 6% critical hit chance. For the Sokolov Vest, max rolled armor, 11.8% crit hit damage, and 3.5% crit hit chance. The unbreakable talent aids with survivability. Last, we have the Picaro's Holster that grants 15% weapon damage. 
For the stats, the Ouroboros SMG is currently at 54.5% crit hit chance and 135% crit hit damage. For the skills, I'm using the Defender Drone and Decoy. Depending on your playstyle, you may decide to change to something else. And there you have it, guys. With these three PvP builds in your arsenal, you should have no problem tackling the Dark Zone and fighting any players you encounter. This is Prajna, and if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. Take care, agents, and I'll be seeing you in the next video. Later.